Hey guys, today I'll be talking about my predictions for the 2020 Senate races. Currently, the Republicans hold 53 seats in the Senate to the Democrats' is 47, so the Re Republican Party does have a majority at the moment. Uh, the Republicans have 23 seats up for re-election in 2020, compared to the Democrats' is 12. Now, the Democratic Party is likely to flip the Senate into their control in 2020, so today we're just going to look at each of these races separately and who I predict will win in each state. Uh, so the safe democratic states, I'm just not going to go into too much detail. There are eight of them. Oregon, New Mexico, Illinois, Minnesota, Virginia, Delaware, New Jersey, uh, Massachusetts, and Rhode, Rhode, and Rhode Island. Sorry about that. And these are all of the safe Democratic senator seats. Um, they go to the Democrats on the presidential and Senate levels. And these are all safe seats for the incumbents. Next, the safe Republican seats, Idaho, Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Tennessee, and, Vir and West Virginia. These are all safe Republican seats on both levels as well. So we're just going to look at the likely Democratic seats at the moment. So currently, Colorado, um, held by Cory Gardner at the moment, a Republican. He's behind John Hickenlooper by 13 points in the polls. Hickenlooper, the former governor of Colorado, a popular, uh, popular in the state of Colorado. He had an unsuccessful presidential campaign. However, he is liked by the people of Colorado. And he is likely to flip the state for the Democratic Party. So this is the first flip. Uh, next is the state of Michigan. Michigan is currently held by Gary Peters, the incumbent Democrat, and he's up 8% in the polls. So, um, the state of Michigan is likely for Gary Peters. Next, in the state of New Hampshire, New Hampshire currently held by Democrat Jean Shaheen. She is pretty popular in New Hampshire. Uh, she is polling ahead of her, uh, Republican, um, opponents. And she is likely to retain her Senate seat as well. Uh, the second flip, the second likely flip for the Democratic Party is in the state of Arizona. Uh, Mark Kelly, the former astronaut, is eight points, um, polling ahead by eight points against Martha McSally, the incumbent. Uh, she is not a strong candidate. Uh, the Republicans should have, um, I think, nominated someone much stronger. However, she, um, she is poised to lose her Senate seat at the moment. Uh, Mar Mark Kelly is polling very well, and I think he will flip Arizona for the Democrats. Next, we'll be looking at the elected Republican seats. These include John Cornyn's seat in the state of Texas. He's polling 10% ahead of all, every Democrat at the moment. And although um, Texas is becoming more and more purple on the presidential level, um, Cornyn is still pretty popular in the state of Texas. I don't think a 2018 outcome will occur in 2020, where Beto O'Rourke was only one point behind Ted Cruz, I believe. I think Cornyn will have a pretty, um, a pretty large victory in the state of Texas. Next is the state of Alabama, currently held by Doug Jones, the Democrat. This is the only vulnerable Democratic seat, and the only state that I think the Democrats will lose in 2020. Um, Tommy, T Tommy Tuberville is currently polling three points ahead of Doug Jones in the state of Alabama, so I think the Republicans will be able to flip the state of Alabama after 2020. Next is the state of Mississippi. Mississippi, currently held by Cindy Clyde Smith. She's up by 8 points, and she is pretty likely to win her re-election as well. Um, however, not by um, a safe margin. She's only up 8% in the polls at the moment. Next is the state of Kentucky. Um, the Senate seat in Kentucky is currently held by Senate, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. He has about a 34% approval rating in the seat, I believe. He is the most unpopular Senate Senator in the entire country. However, he has always been unpopular, so that is nothing new for the majority leader. Um, however, he is likely to become the Senate minority leader after this election. Uh, he is actually up 17 points in the most recent poll against McBath, who has won the Democratic nomination for Senate in the state of Kentucky. I do not think she is a strong candidate. I think um, Charles Booker, her Democratic opponent, would have been um, would have had a much stronger. Uh, chance of flipping state of Kentucky. However, Kentucky is a pretty red state, and McConnell, um, lots of name recognition. He is 
um, still expected to win in the state of Kentucky, no matter how unpopular he is. Next, we'll be looking at the lean Democratic states. Um, these being the states of North Carolina, uh, Montana, and Iowa. So first, in the state of North Carolina, North Carolina went to, is uh, went to Tom Tillis in the last election. However, Cal Cunningham, a Democrat, is likely to flip the state. He is 10 points above Tillis at the moment. And um, I think this will be the third flip for the Democrats. They're currently at 49 seats. Next is the state of Montana. Montana currently uh, leans towards Steve Bullock. This is the second flip of, I mean, the fourth flip. Um, currently held by Steve Daines. He is pulling behind Steve Bullock, the former governor of Montana. Bullock is very popular in his home state. And he is likely to flip the state of Montana, a pretty Republican state on the presidential level, for the Democrats on the Senate level. So right now, the Democrats would win 50 seats. Um, if Joe Biden were to win, his Democratic vice president, the president of the Senate, would break the ties. So 50 is enough for the Democrats to control the Senate. However, they are also likely to win in the state of Iowa. This is pretty surprising. Teresa Greenfield is three points above Joni Ernst, the um, Republican incumbent, and she is likely to win this state. However, um, I could see both of them um, having a victory in Iowa. Next, we were looking at the lean Republican states. There are actually six of them, uh, one of them being Georgia's special election. So first, we're going to look at the state of Alaska. Alaska currently leans towards Dan Sullivan by 1%. He is the incumbent. He won a very narrow race in 2014. However, he is likely to win in the state of Alaska, although it is narrowing down for the Republicans. Next, we'll be looking at the state of Kansas. Kansas, um, Bully Air currently leads by one point in Kansas. This is a traditionally Republican state on the presidential level. Uh, she is expected to narrowly um, retain her seat in the state of Kansas, so I will give the state of Kansas to Barbara Bollier. Next, we'll be looking at the state of South Carolina. This is Lindsey Graham's home state. He has a lot of name recognition. He is also up 1% in the polls at the moment. Uh, Lindsey Graham, uh, pretty unpopular in South Carolina. However, he is still expected to win. He is leading all the Democratic uh, candidates and South Carolina, a lean state for the Republicans. Next is the uh, two Georgia elections, the Georgia Senate race and the Georgia special election. In the Georgia um, just normal race, uh, David Perdue, the Republican, leads by 3% and he is likely to hold on to his seat in South Carolina. Next, the Georgia special election. Uh, currently, uh, Kelly Loeffler is up in the polls. Um, Georgia, a pretty Republican state um, traditionally. However, because of Joe Biden's rising poll numbers, the Democrats are having a larger chance in the state of Georgia. So I think Georgia um, special election will be close. However, I do think it will still go to Loeffler and the Republicans. Uh, the last Senate race we'll be looking at, I think, it will be the closest Senate race in the 2020 election, and that is the Senate race held in Maine. Uh, currently, Susan Collins, the incumbent, she has been a senator from the state of Maine since the year 2000, and except for her first race, she has been able to win all of her Senate races pretty easily. Um, Collins was was the most popular senator in the entire country. Um, she is a bipartisan senator, and that is what um, the people of Maine like. Um, they typically like um, bipartisan senators. Um, however, Collins did vote for Kavanaugh as well as acquitting Donald Trump, and this really has plummeted her approval rating in the state of Maine. Um, she is currently running against Sarah Gideon, who has been leading in the polls. However, in the most recent poll, Colin actually leads Gideon by 8%. So this is a positive sign for Collins and her campaign. However, I do think this race will be very, very close. However, I do think uh, Collins, the senator, she's been serving Maine for over 20 years. I think she will be able to retain her Senate seat in the state of Maine. However, by a very small margin, I think this will be her closest election yet. So I'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. As you can see, I am trying to upload daily now instead of every other day. So if you enjoy these videos, a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. And I will see you in the next video.